to that. We got some things to discuss. Look, Conor McGregor's out of UFC 200. What in the hell's going on here? I feel like we're still not getting the story. I like drama. I think this, the speculation is fun. What happened here? We've got Conor side says he retired. So I think we can all, all agree it is, it is absurd. He's not retired. But he says he is. So on some level, you got to take him at his word, no matter how, how, how ridiculous. And then you've got Dana White coming out and just saying, look, he's not going to fight at UFC 200. I don't know what he's going to do. But Dana doesn't seem too upset at him. This is the kind of thing that would, would usually upset Dan. He didn't seem that upset. He just said, yeah, it's not working. He, did, he didn't want to do the media. we got to have the media done. It's part of his contract. You know, you, ha you have to do it, you know, particularly for what they're paying and what his guarantee is, the way his contract works. You guys all, all, all hear how, you know, Connor made a million dollars and he was the first fighter to do it. Yeah, he, he made a million dollars many, many times over. No, nobody understands how the, the actual structure of the UFC works as far as pay goes. But the bottom line is, He's got a guarantee, and he's got points on the back end. You need a guy like that to fulfill his contract. If, it, if the contract says he's got to do a reasonable amount of media, he's got to do a reasonable amount of media. That's a very general term, but I think we can all agree reasonable does not mean none. Does not mean I'm going to pass on it. And think for Connor, I get Connor's argument here. Doing that media is tough. Everybody wants to do media. Everybody wants to be on the cover of magazines. Everybody wants to be on Jimmy Fallon's couch until you have to go do it. Those photo shoots, those media tours, those airplanes, those hotels, man, those get real old real fast. And that's your dream. You know, it's, it's that old expression, be careful what you ask for because you just might get it. So Connor goes out, he fights Nate Diaz, and he gets cleaned up. And above everything else, he gets exhausted in seven and a half minutes. Well, Connor learned his lesson. Good for him. He looks at that and goes, listen, I had a problem the last time out. I'm fighting the same guy at the same weight class in the same city for that matter. Definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. So Connor looked at it and goes, I'm, I'm buckling down. Get somebody else to go do that media. No, it doesn't work that way. You're the guy. You're on top of the bill. You're the biggest star in the company. And you got a contract and you get paid the most. We need you to do the media. So you've got both sides of it here. Now, Connor's wrong. Connor is on the wrong side of it. But I think you can see what his side is. You know, that UFC title changes hands constantly. Constantly. You know, a friend of mine, Anthony Pettis, was on the cover of the Weedy Box 24 months ago. And now he's one of the guys. Not only is he not the champion, he's not on the box. He's not the number one contender or the number two. I don't know where his rank. He's one of the guys. And that's just a reality, particularly in that weight class. It's so hard and it's so competitive. You know, as soon as you have to start going out and, and trading Weedy Boxes for practice, it becomes a problem. And I'd have done what Pettis did. I don't want to be in the weedy box, too. That's a cool thing. But all of a sudden, you're not in practice. All of a sudden, you're not the champ. All of a sudden, you're not on the shelf. It's, it's just it's the life of the industry. And it's very hard. Guys lose those straps all the time. And one of the reasons is when you go to the top of the bill and you're the marquee guy, you're now the guy that's getting invited and asked to be on all the shows. You're the guy that's got to get up at 4 a.m. if you live on the West Coast to be in studio when it's 7 a.m. drive time in the East Coast. The guy's got to sleep at some point. A fighter is cutting weight. He's overtraining. And when you add not sleep into that mix, you're getting sick 100% of the time. So what's that do? Send you out of the gym. Meanwhile, your opponent, who's hungry and trying to take your spot, nobody knows who he is. He's in the gym every day because nobody's asking him to come and do the interviews. He's not the marquee guy. And it's one of the reasons that title changes hands so often. Once you get on top, it's really hard to do the things that got you there. You got on top by scratching and clawing and being in that damn gym more time than you want to be there. Being in front of that coach, smelling that same smell, working out on that resolite, getting into that cage in the practice room, hitting those hills early in the morning. That's how you got there. And all of a sudden, you can't do it anymore. Now you're on an airplane. Now you're in a hotel. Now you're, you're getting a workout in a hotel treadmill. And you're running your ass off. You're going as hard as you could possibly go. But don't kid yourself that those 30 minutes on that hotel treadmill, no matter what you set that incline at, no matter how much you turn up that iPad to get that music going through those speakers, don't kid yourself that that's going to replace the three hours a day that you would normally spend in your gym if you were in your hometown and could just pull into the parking lot like you used to do. So I get why Connor doesn't want to do it, but a contract's a contract and a deal's a deal. 
Whether you like it or not, guys, there's good deals and there's bad deals. But when you make a deal, a deal is a deal. And it goes two ways. The UFC makes bad deals all the time. Of course they do. That's all they do. That's what a business does. They make deals. Not just with their fighters, with their production company, with their PR people, with their internal employees, their external client and their internal client. Welcome to business. You make deals. And you make bad ones along the way. You have unforeseens that come up all the time. But when the UFC makes a deal and there's an unforeseen that comes up, they write that check every time because a deal's a deal. And it goes both ways. I get Connor's point. The bigger point is the contract's the contract. He's got to do the media. It's the bigger point. I don't know what his future is. I can tell you what he wants it to be. I can tell you what his vision is. Everybody's got a vision and dream. All of you people do too. He's no different. He wants to do self-promotions. He wants to become a promoter. He believes that he could book Croke Park and sell it out. There was a time even when there was a little bit of discussion going on that. I believe he reserved some name or McGregor promotions or, or something silly like that. And Benson Henderson was floating around. He wasn't on, under contract with anybody. Now he's under contract with Bellator, but for a minute he wasn't. Connor thought, well, look, I, I, I'm going to do my own promotion. I could sell out Croke Park right in my hometown. I can find some TV sponsor to partner up with me, and I got an opponent. His name is Benson Henderson. How close that was to a reality, I don't think it was very close. But he had that vision. That's how everything starts. It starts with an idea. So when Connor leaves the UFC, as much as I want to sit here and go, well, yeah, but he's not gone. He's coming back. He's only 27 years old, blah, blah, blah. He's got a contract. He, well, you know, he, he might want to do something else. I don't know. Some bitch is crazy. I don't know. For the most part, in a good way. He really is. But he's crazy all the same. Fine line between genius and insanity. I don't know where he sits. And I don't know if he's going to be back. But the bigger talk and the talk that didn't come up was what do you do with a 145-pound belt? If you're out of UFC 200, then you're out of the UFC, at least temporarily. His contract didn't get cut. Taking Dana's temperature, just watching him do ESPN, watching him do the, the brief interviews he did, he wasn't too mad about it. It was kind of a surprise. Dana was pretty relaxed. I think he looked at it and just goes, hey, this isn't working out. We're having some trouble here. Show's still three months away. I got plenty of time to promote whoever I want. I'm, I'm going to have to want someone else. I'm going to have to want to promote somebody else. Didn't it seem as upset as you would think? Now, if this, if this would have been three days away or three weeks away, I think we'd have a totally different conversation. But the fact that it's still a show in progress, it's, it's still forming. Yeah, they lost their main event, but there's plenty of time. I, I think maybe that... That, that kept cooler heads. I really don't know. But the talk should have been, what's going on with the 145-pound belt? Is Frankie and Jose still got a fight for the interim championship? And that should have been asked initially. That should have been asked by the, the host on ESPN when Dana came out. But I, I, I think that the shock factor was there. Wait a minute. The biggest show in UFC history just lost the biggest show in the company's history. And I think the 145-pound title just got overlooked. That came out today. Dana just did a interview with Colin Coward, and he said that it will be for the real the real belt. That that if Connor's stepping aside, he's got to vacate that title. So there you go. I like that. I agree with that. I think if he's going to fight at one seventy. There should probably have been a discussion on that. It wasn't Connor's fault? He was still fighting. There was a, there was a discussion. I don't know that for sure. He should have been stripped. Fighting at 170, he's still doing stuff for the company. He's still moving forward and staying active. But that discussion starts to loom. There's no rule on that. The general policy, and it was started in boxing way back in the day, and we take everything from boxing. They were doing combat before we were. The general rule is if you don't defend your belt within 12 months, you're no longer the champion. But that doesn't have to be followed. We, we just saw Daniel Cormier. He's still the champion. But John Jones and OSP are just about to fight for this interim championship. So th th there's a lot of moving parts. There's, there's not a rule on that, but there is a precedent set. So it hasn't been a year for Connor. Won't be a year until December 12th, 2016. So I don't know if you had to strip him in that case, but you certainly do now. And he made a deal. You know, a, a deal's a deal. I like Connor, but I don't like anybody that doesn't honor a deal, period. There's good deals and there's bad deals. But when you make it, you got a deal, and it goes both ways.
The UFC makes bad deals all the time. And they write the check every single time. That's relevant to this story. It's relevant to understand that. Now, here's what you guys.